Hello and welcome. This is Darren bringing you another post uh, match commentary. Uh, I've been in my LRM oxide now for about two months because I just wanted to change the pace. So I was uh, switching between my Jenner oxide LRMer and my Jenner D. I really have more fun in my Jenner D, believe it or not. But uh, this is actually the first match I got back into SRMs uh, simply because uh, oxides are on sale now half off and I'm just seeing so many mistakes on oxide players. So I just had to school a few people. Um, this is Canyon Network. It's a decent map for uh, oxides. I uh, started on the uh, Echo 3 ish area. So when you come around the uh, rivet or the cliffs right there, make sure you uh, take your time. I always have seismic here. Uh, always pause before you go around corners just to make sure you don't run into that friendly neighborhood Kodiak, and there are plenty of them. Uh, so always make sure you're careful, because despite what people think, a uh, oxide can only take a hit and maybe two, unless it's a full-on alpha, in which case it's pretty much going to obliterate them. This is a hunchback I see uh, down in the ravine going away. I'm hiding, making sure he's going away from me, which he is. And if he's by himself, it'll actually be a very, very juicy target. Now, I didn't get the complete read of his loadout, but it looked like he was lasers. So I'm going to just sneak up behind him here and see what I can do. Remember, the key to an oxide, or any light for that matter, is to be patient. You have to be patient. And you'll see what I'm talking about later on in this match. And I see the hunchback here. I was like, okay, he's mostly by himself, I think. So I take one alpha to his legs and always go for the legs. I don't care what anybody says. Go for the freaking legs. And then I realize he has friends. A lot of friends. So I get the hell out of here. There's at least four mechs over here. I drop my UAV and I'm getting the hell out. Don't even try to fight. You're not going to be able to handle this. Despite what the assault players will tell you, you are not invincible. So I'm sitting here jigging and jagging, juking, doing everything I possibly can. And uh, for some reason, they decide to ignore me, which I am very, very happy with. I got my uh, UAV down. I did my job. I'm letting my team know at this particular point that I got my UAV down. But apparently they are in a full-on brawl on the other side of the map. So uh, they're getting ready to get flanked. And uh, this match doesn't turn out so well for my team, actually. I tried to uh, get up the hill here, but yeah, that didn't quite work. Uh, one of the great limitations of the Oxide, and mine, don't mind my drunk driving right here, great limitations of Oxide is we don't have jump jets. Uh, some people say that our treasure bus makes up for it, and for the most part, they do. And you can see my team up there in the north part of the map just getting owned. But um, So on maps like this, you got to be real careful with the Oxide not to get too out of position if you can help it. So, uh, as you can see, my team is starting to drop like for eyes, and I've pretty much made the decision that uh, I'm going to have to make something happen if we have any chance whatsoever of uh, winning this match. And remember that even though the Oxide isn't overpowered per se, the Persona very much is. People panic when they see an Oxide on them, so use it. I mean, really use it against them. Uh, you'll be surprised what people do trying to get the hell away from an oxide. It's actually quite comical at times. And this is a Jaeger mech I've come up on along with a, a friendly little archer. And I can't take both of them on at the same time, but it looks like the Jaeger mech is getting ready to bug out. So I'm going to just sit here and see what the hell happens. This is what I'm talking about with patience. Don't rush in. Be patient. See what the hell they're doing. And then go in for the kill because it'll be so much sweeter. Now, usually I advocate going for the legs. But it looks like he's by himself. His core's back's already cored out. So I'm going to see if I can one-shot him right here. And uh, lovely SRN spread, and I missed. So I managed to get a second shot on him before he gets out of range, and then I had to back off because he's got friends there. So I'm not want to stay and play. I want to get out of here because I don't quite know what's around it. As you can see on seismic, I'm pretty much surrounded. So I'm taking a little bit of fire there on the uh, top center torch. So he's still trying to fire LRMs at me. So I think maybe that I have a UAV above me. So before any missiles can hit me, I'm going to get up against the wall where the LRMs will not have uh, ability to hit me. And as you can see now, my team is really, really dropping like flies. So I have to do something. So I decided to uh, sneak around the corner here, see what I've got going. And I've got a uh, Jaeger as well as, I uh, couldn't quite tell what Kilo was, but I fired a missile at him. I'm going to try for the back shot again. And I don't quite get him, but here's my friendly little archer. And one shot to his back torso, which was Cherry Red. I managed to take him out, take another free shot at the uh, Jaeger mech. And I bugged the hell out of there. And uh, remember, when you're moving as a light, jig and juke, do not run in the straight line. If you run in a straight line, you're going to be one shot. Absolutely. So I see here and turn the corner. This was actually funny. I call this a Larry Curly and Mo incident. And you'll see why here in a second. Remember, once again, be careful. See what happens. This is Larry Curly and Mo. Uh, I have aptly named them, and you'll see why. This is why assaults think the oxide is overpowered. You have three mechs here who out 
weigh me probably 10 to 1. And there's one shot there. Jaeger Mick doesn't move, has no idea on there. Here's a second shot. He's dead. Here's the Kodiak. I'm starting to leg him. He, once again, does not engage me. It is not until, what, the third shot? Fourth shot. Third shot. So, yeah, four shots before he even thinks about engaging me. Once again, this is piss poor situational awareness. This is why the assault players and heavy players think the oxide and other mechs are overpowered because they don't pay attention. And here it is. I'm just working on his legs. And uh, I think I end up getting the kill shot here. Here they go. And now I realize, okay, I got one mech left. And then I realize, okay, I'm by myself. It is now, what, six mechs to 11, and I get out of there because I really want to spread these guys out. And I realize as I look down my ammo counter that I only have 128 uh, rounds left. <laughs> so unless they are really, really hurt, I'm not going to be able to do much with them. So uh, I bug out, and I run. And a quick little tip, if you are in a situation where you can't bug out, power down inside of a dead assault mech. Uh, they will never know you're there because the uh, shadow of the, uh, the actual carcass of the assault mech can actually hide you. So I've used that tactic before a few times to ambush people. They'll walk right by you and not even realize it. Just be careful if they've got BAP, if it's like a missile boat or something. They yeah, can lock on you if you're tar uh, uh, powered down. Now here I am talking with my team, trying to figure out exactly what's left. And that's where the whole, I don't have the ammo for was like, yeah, you're right, I don't. But I can still do some damage, so that's what I set out to do. Here's a Kodiak, and here's a uh, pro tip take off arm lock. When your arm lock is on, you can't aim down. And this was his Cody X problem right there. He had his arm locked down because he wanted a super awesome alpha to be all in one location and his arm lock was on. So this is why his arm lasers couldn't quite get, or his arm lasers wouldn't quite go lower than what they could. So I'm sitting here and looking for his buddies. I know he's over there. He's already spotted them. So I know his buddies are probably on his way to me, but I have no idea where they're at. And then I turned this corner. I'm like, okay, cool. Hey, there's a hunchback. Uh, it's a clan hunchback, so I have to take out both torsos or a CT. And he's already got his right torso or left torso taken out. One shot to his left torso, and he is now a left visual, and he's now gone. So that's one magnet gone. Now I'm taking, getting the hell out of there. And I see another banshee here. I take a shot at him, and I see he's got an open CT, so I still have some ammo. I want to see if I can take out that CT. Now, even though I do advocate taking out the legs, if you have open components, go for it. And with the way this terrain was, I just could not get a clear shot on the uh, uh, his torso, and I finally did. So there goes the second one. And here I run out of ammo. And this uh, Warhammer right here, I really, 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 really wanted to... Uh, kill because it had open ct plus he started talking to smack at, as he was firing his ppcs at point blank range and wanting to know why he couldn't kill me another pro tip uh player for folks ppcs regular claim or is don't work under 90 meters just for the record and here i start to bug out and i says you know what i'm just going to run let's make them chase me and that's exactly what i do here so if you don't want to see any more that's fine go ahead and stop the video thank you for watching but i just run around for about the next five minutes uh irritating them the best i can um but remember when you're on these maps jig and jog because even though they're sitting there aiming at me they can't hit me because I'm jigging and juking so much. Now they'll say hit ridge, hit ridge, freaking lag shield. There is no lag shield. And shout out that here. He's the one that's actually in the uh, Warhammer that CT'd, firing his PPCs at me at point blank range, wanting to know why can't, he can't kill me. And uh, the Kodiak's actually doing pretty good at long range because he's got the duration lasers. <clears throat> and here they're talking about the uh, oxide being pay to win and all that good stuff. But like I said, for the most part, it's not. Freaking assault players just don't pay attention. They want to be the king of the battlefields. And the fact of the matter is they're not. Uh, the key to any map, especially this one, is stay low. Don't get up on these ridges. If you're up on these ridges and they can see you, then they know, A, who you are, what you have, your loadout is, and they'll be able to uh, spot you. Now, watch right here. It's actually, uh, <laughs> this is kind of funny. When you're light player, you got to be smart. Here's one mech right here, Lima, who is going... Um, east to west and uh, i decided to pull a 180 here because he spotted me headed this way so if i kept going this way then uh, all the other folks are going to meet me so i just pull 180 right here and you're going to see him again headed the other way and i'm assuming his other team is and that's one way to get people off your thing make sudden course changes don't be predictable and you can see he's heading the other direction now so his entire team is headed over there to uh I think it's, what is it, Echo 3-ish or something like that. and Or not Echo 3, but yeah, over there somewhere. And uh, so their entire team is headed that direction, but yet here I am running over here in relative freedom. 
So play smart like that. Do stupid course corrections. Don't circle strafe. If you if you're solo doing a one on one on an assault player, don't be predictable because once you get predictability in you, the assault's going to be able to take you out all all day long, and there's nothing you can do about it. So be unpredictable. And like I said, all I'm doing right now is just being a dick, basically, because uh, that one guy really ticked me off. So I was going, I wasn't avoiding them, but I was just making them work for their money. Uh, that and I was trying to figure out how I could kill him with no ammo, which is impossible. And then Paul explicit here <laughs> types in that he's uh, trying to level up a mech. I was, felt sorry for him. So right here around the corner, I said, oh, okay, I'll just go ahead and find the enemy, see what we can do. Okay. And I ended up spotting him around this ridge right here. But people sit here and say overpower, overpower, overpowered. It's not overpowered. People just don't understand that you can't ignore it. If you ignore it, guess what? Yeah, it's going to kill you. I mean, I had three mechs right there point blank range and they ignored me completely. And I took two or three out and could have taken the third one out if somebody else had done it earlier. And you'll see right here, Shadow Dad or whoever he is trying to fire his PPCs at me. Look at this. Uh, and boom, there's one PPC. And hit me but it didn't register because it has minimum range and he fires him again right there so yeah <laughs> and now i'm just having fun here because he couldn't hit me but that's just another commentary i just thought it was hilarious this is my first match after a uh being in an lrm oxide for the last god probably two months now two and a half months something like that uh five kills 814 points of damage and it's hilarious because they are making fun of me switching from HHAD to MS, which I haven't been part of HHAD, which is a great unit, by the way, since if you're a Davian fan, that's a good unit to be part of since, uh, I don't know, two years ago, I believe. But uh, once again, if you're in a light, play smart. Don't go charging. The moment you start charging head on, you're going to be obliterated. Get in behind them. Relax, take your time, and be patient. You really do have to be patient. I hope you enjoyed this uh, commentary, and there should be more to come. So, without any further ado, Jitter Nation, be safe, and leg the hell out of them assaults.